Hello and welcome to Riverside's Heart Month Lecture Series. In honor of Heart Month, Riverside is excited to be presenting a new community lecture on a different cardiovascular topic each Thursday this month. Today, we will be focusing on prevention and symptom recognition. We will also learn about risk factors, how to prevent heart and vascular disease, and how to maintain a heart healthy lifestyle. We will also learn to recognize the signs and symptoms of emergencies such as heart attack and stroke. Today, we will be hearing from Julie Lear. Julie is a nurse practitioner with Riverside Cardiothoracic Surgeons, where she assists the surgeons managing patients after open heart surgery, valve replacements, lung procedures, and other chest procedures. Her primary focus is to work with her patients to achieve their goals and improve their quality of life. There will be a lot of information covered today, but you can always rewind and visit any section again if you want to hear it another time or for additional information, please visit Riverside's Heart and Vascular website at riversideonline.com slash heart. With all of that in mind, let's get to tonight's presentation. Without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Julie Lear. Julie. Good evening, everyone. My name is Julie Lear, and I am the nurse practitioner with the Riverside Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery Team. I'd like to welcome you to the Riverside Heart Month Lecture Series. And I'm delighted to be talking to you this evening about a heart healthy life, tips on staying well and recognizing symptoms. So let's get started. So what is cardiovascular disease? So we use this term cardiovascular disease as kind of an umbrella term to describe a lot of uh, multiple diagnoses that you see here on the screen. So we have heart disease or atherosclerosis, which is a blockage in the artery that supplies the heart with blood and oxygen. Heart attack, which is uh, decreased blood flow to the heart as described in heart disease. It's a blockage and it can cause heart muscle damage. We have a brain attack, which is a stroke. Um, that's from decreased blood flow to the arteries that supply the brain with blood and oxygen. Uh, heart failure is another term that uh, can be described either uh, because of the pumping function of the heart or what we call systolic heart failure, or it can be due to the relaxation problem of the heart, which we call diastolic heart failure can also be caused by arrhythmias or abnormal heart rhythms. And the most common of those is atrial fibrillation and heart valve conditions such as aortic stenosis, which is a narrowing of the heart valve that supplies your whole body with blood and oxygen. So the, all of these terms you might've heard before, but tonight what we're gonna talk a little bit about is how to stay well and recognizing the signs and symptoms of cardiovascular disease. So first we'll talk about coronary artery disease. In both of these uh, illustrations, you can see that there is a picture of a normal artery here as well as here. And um, that is where blood flows through those arteries, nice and normal. But what happens is if you have risk factors for coronary artery disease, such as hypertension, diabetes, uh, high cholesterol, if you uh, use tobacco, those things can cause plaque or fatty deposits to build up in the artery. And you can see it's making the artery smaller. And here you can see it here as well as over here. And so this plaque and fatty deposits build up on the walls of the arteries and can eventually restrict the blood flow from coming down through here and form a clot, a blood clot, which can ultimately cause a heart attack or heart muscle damage. So how do we keep our heart healthy and prevent coronary artery disease? So the first thing we say is be in the know know about your body and know about things, risk factors that increase your risk of heart disease. We'll talk a little bit about those on the next slide. 
eat a heart healthy diet, low fat, low cholesterol, uh, watching your sodium intake. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in the uh, presentation as well. Being physically active and managing your weight and um, eliminating, I'm sorry, eliminating or uh, at least trying to cut back on smoking cessation. Smoking is probably the number one preventable risk factor or uh, something that we can do to modify our risk factor is decreasing smoking or hopefully eliminating it. Managing other conditions such as hypertension and diabetes will also help with heart health, as well as managing stress. And I realize at this time, you know, with COVID and everybody's busy lives that the stress levels are quite high. So trying to manage those stress levels can really help with, with heart health. So I talked a little, about, a little bit about being in the know, and that means knowing your body, making sure that you schedule an annual wellness visit with your primary care provider. And during that visit, you'll be talking about your family medical history that is so important uh, because hereditary factors have a lot to do with coronary artery disease and early coronary artery disease. Monitoring your blood pressure and making sure if your blood pressure is elevated that you're seeking medical care. Uh, during the wellness visits, you usually get blood work done that looks at your cholesterol and your uh, glucose level or A1C, and also monitoring your weight and ensuring that you keep a healthy weight per, for your height. And knowing those signs and symptoms, that means you should call the doctor or you should call 911 and get medical attention. So a heart attack occurs when the heart muscle has a lack of blood and oxygen. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. And so everyone's ability to recognize these signs and symptoms can help save lives. Uh, some of those signs can be trouble sleeping or fatigue or unusual tiredness. Uh, some people have chest pain, chest pressure. Some people describe it as an elephant sitting on your chest. Uh, you can have shortness of breath uh, that's out of proportion to the activity that you're doing. Uh, pain, discomfort in the jaws, neck, back, or the stomach. Uh, you can have cold sweats or unusual sweating that again is out of proportion for what you're doing. Uh, some people have nausea, vomiting, and indigestion feeling. Any of these symptoms are concerning for coronary artery disease or cardiovascular disease. And uh, it's something that you need to either talk to your physician about, or if you feel that it is an emergency, you call 911. I wanna talk a little bit here about a stroke. A stroke is when you have damage to the brain from blood flow that's been interrupted. There's two types of stroke. You can have an ischemic stroke, which is caused by a blood clot formation, or you can have a hemorrhagic stroke, which is bleeding in the brain. Both of these um, are life-threatening and you need to seek medical help right away if you have any of these symptoms. The majority of the strokes are ischemic, about 90% of those, and about 15 to 20% of that group, it's usually uh, caused by carotid artery stenosis or narrowing of the arteries that supply the brain with blood and oxygen. So knowing what the signs and symptoms are is very important and you can use the acronym BFAST. So B stands for balance. Patients who are having a stroke can have a loss of balance or dizziness. E for eyes, they can have a sudden loss of vision or double vision, blurry vision. Uh, F for face, 
usually you see some type of drooping of the mouth or face, uh, especially on one side, or some people even complain that they have the worst headache of their life on one side or another. R A is for arm or leg weakness, uh, especially on one side. S for speech or, or difficulty speaking. Some patients can even have where they can't get their words out or they're unable to say anything. And T is for time, time to call 911. Never try and drive your loved one to the hospital when they're having an emergency. You can't do anything for them if something happens in the seat beside you. So always call 911 and have them brought to the emergency room to be evaluated by EMS. So knowing these signs and symptoms of a stroke can help people get immediate treatment and life-saving interventions, particularly here at Riverside, we have a neurointerventionalist that are on call 24 seven that can help save people's lives and prevent the devastating side effects of having a stroke. So in order to prevent cardiovascular disease, you need to decrease your risk factors. And one of ways of doing that is a heart healthy diet or heart healthy eating. And I know that a lot of people do not get enough fresh fruits and vegetables. We should have about seven to nine servings a day of fresh fruits and vegetables. Heart healthy eating is also choosing lean and plant-based proteins and trying to decrease your saturated and trans fats or what we call high fat, high cholesterol eating. Increase fiber and whole grains. Choosing low fat or no fat dairy products and don't skip meals. One of the best things to do to help lose weight and stay fueled throughout the day is more frequent mini meals and focusing on portion control. I tell most of my patients that you should have half of your plate with fruits or vegetables, a quarter with a starch or rice or potato, you know, whatever your starch may be, and a quarter with your protein. And try and limit those sweets, desserts, and sodas that are not very good for you, even if you're not diabetic. Alcohol, you can drink in moderation. And one of the big things is watching your sodium intake. Being physically active is another way of decreasing risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Staying physical can help lower your blood pressure. It can decrease your LDL, which is the bad cholesterol that we call it, bad cholesterol. It improves your blood sugar. It can reduce feelings of stress. It can help control your weight, improve your sleep, and also decrease depression. Now people say, well, what can I do for exercise for my heart? The best thing to do is walking and you don't even need a gym membership. You just need walking shoes or comfortable shoes that you can get out walking and that you walk every day for about 30 minutes. You can swim, dance, bike, those things. Um, you know, whatever can get your heart rate up and help with um, managing your weight are great things to do for a cardiovascular disease. Exercises for other muscles, you can do lifting weights, resistant bands, push-ups, yoga. Um, a lot of people feel that that helps to also relieve their stress. Quitting smoking is the number one most important thing you can do to help your heart. A quarter of all cardiovascular deaths can be directly linked to smoking. Smoking damages the lining of the blood vessels, and it puts you at higher risk for heart attacks, strokes, and peripheral artery disease, which can lead to amputations of toes, feet, and lower legs. So if nothing else, trying to eliminate or decrease your smoking or tobacco use can be very beneficial for helping with 
reducing cardiovascular disease. And of course, managing other conditions like diabetes, keeping your hemoglobin A1C less than seven, staying healthy, making sure you get your annual vaccinations for the flu, pneumonia, and of course your COVID-19 series. And make sure that you take all your medications as prescribed by your provider. If you're having any kind of side effects or complications with your medications, please do not stop them, but call your physician or nurse practitioner and talk to them, go in and talk to them and have a discussion about what's going on. And there are always other options or ways that we can decrease those side effects so you can continue to take your medications and live longer. Another thing that you need to do to help with cardiovascular disease is managing your stress and your mental health. Uh, during stress times, you have a stress hormone called cortisol. It can cause elevated heart rates and irregular rhythms. It can cause digestive problems, increase blood pressure. It causes inflammation in the blood vessels and can reduce the blood flow to your heart. So finding ways that you can manage stress can be the best things for decreasing that cortisol level and helping with preventing cardiovascular disease. Like I said earlier, exercising is a great way to decrease stress, spending time with your friends, making sure that you're getting enough sleep at night, uh, that you're maintaining a positive attitude. You could even take up hobbies or things that help reduce the stress in your life. And of course, you can practice relaxation techniques. Some people even use yoga or meditation or listening to music. All of these things can help manage the cortisol levels and the stress that we live with every day. And finally, if you're still having concerns, please talk to your primary care provider, making sure that you're getting your annual wellness visits and talk to your provider and have them answer any questions that you might have about your risk factors and how you can decrease those risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And if you notice any changes or new symptoms, please let your provider know so that they can investigate those further and see if there's any additional workup that might need to be done. And of course, if you're having any heart attack or stroke symptoms that we discussed earlier in this lecture, please call 911 to get emergent care. And here's my information. Again, I wanna thank you for tuning in to tonight's lecture. I hope this information has provided you with not only knowledge of cardiovascular disease and its symptoms, but also ways to decrease your risk factors for developing cardiovascular disease and living a heart healthy life. Have a wonderful night and happy heart month. Thank you so much, Julie, for sharing this information with us today. It has certainly been educational and helped us each focus on which risk factors we have and steps we can take to reduce our own risk. I hope everyone enjoyed the presentation and I hope people have had a chance to listen to the other lectures we have had. Please keep an eye out for other future health lectures that we share on Riverside's various social media outlets, our website and our YouTube channel. Thank you again for joining us and I hope you have a great evening. Good night.